your kitchen? Is it a particular reason or is that just the only place that it kind of fits? I just got um, this guy to like put up rails and then I just thought, okay, I'll make that wardrobe. See, I don't think it's weird that people come around and go, why is your kitchen in your, uh, wardrobe in your kitchen? I'm like, oh, yeah, that, I guess that is a bit weird. When I moved in, I went in the bedroom, I was like, where do the clothes go? And they were like, oh, you can get like one of those stand-up wardrobes. I was like, that doesn't work. For events, we get Lent stuff. But most studio stuff is, um, uh, we, we're very lucky we get given a lot of free stuff and um, and uh, and then also the other stuff we buy. So I get to keep it all. Which is why there's so much crap. <laughs> there's some sort of like faux colour coordination going on. So there's like blacks, creams, blues, florals. So this is all cardigans, then waistcoats and then skirts. This is actually one of my favourite things I've ever um, found. It's from uh, Oxfam in, on High Street Ken. Basically, if I'm having a fat day, I'll just get my legs out. <laughs> just standard. So, so there's a lot of short dresses. There are a lot of short dresses. And I went through a period when I was about 19, 20, um, where I just basically um, cut <laughs> everything. <laughs> Looking at it, you can tell there's quite a lot of secondhand stuff. But I think there's a difference also between secondhand and, and like vintage. I really hate being ripped off um, for things that are so-called vintage when really they're just secondhand. How has your style evolved from when you were younger? Because obviously you've been brought, kind of brought up on TV. Has that something that's influenced you or changed how you dress? What seeing yourself in clothes, not just in pictures, on film, so you see the way you move in clothes, it does give you a very different way of, of, of seeing how you want to dress and how and what suits you. You know, um, I, I'm, I'm not a skinny, blonde, tall chick, so you have to sort of be realistic, I think. Um, but then also have fun with clothes. Like, Are there any kind of bad outfits that you've seen on TV and you've watched yourself the next day and just thought, no? This was such a big mistake. Okay, I'm not gonna lie, there's a hood on this dress. <laughs> so I got this. So it's like a skin tight dress <laughs> with a hood <laughs> with tassels. Okay, I wore that on TV. <laughs> they were like, I'm not being funny, but <laughs> never wear that again. I think I wore the hood up for some links. <laughs> So what's kind of the piece that you've spent the most obscene amount of money on and that you may have never worn it or worn it once and it's just stayed hidden? Oh, I wore it. <laughs> I don't know why. It's this guy. <laughs> sure. And uh, okay, so again at the front because I really like the way it looks hanging. This was 250 pounds <laughs> from Portola Market. And I don't know, I was having a gilet moment. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, this was £800 and I have never worn it because I absolutely hate it. <laughs> Do you have a style icon that you kind of continue to refer to? Yes, Jane Birkin. Um, me and my um, wonderful stylist called Celestine Cooney, um, we, so every time we go shopping we say, what would Jane do? Um, <laughs> Not that this really, but I think it's important to not always have to rest on one look. I think that was one of the best things about getting older is you realise that you can actually wear what you love. I remember being so obsessed with a certain sort of vibe when I was about 14 and like really into like Nirvana and stuff. And then wanting to wear something that deviated from that look and feeling really like I couldn't, so, which is ridiculous. So it's really nice to, um, to get older and realise you can wear what you want.